Hi, my name is Robin Wong and in this video I want to talk about the cluster area continuous autofocus for your Olympus OMV cameras. Let's do this! Having used the Olympus OMD system for many years now, I find that many people are not aware of this option cluster area display for continuous autofocus. I don't blame most people because whenever there is a review of the Olympus OMD cameras that's done by even some very large review sites, these reviewers don't even mention the cluster area autofocus when they test the continuous autofocus capabilities of Olympus OMD cameras, they don't use use the cluster area autofocus capabilities. Instead, they use either continuous autofocus alone or continuous autofocus plus tracking. Now, I'm not saying that Olympus tracking autofocus capabilities is not that great, but in some situations, this cluster area autofocus option is superior. And I'm gonna show you how. The cluster area autofocus was first introduced in the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Any subsequent cameras that is released after that will have the cluster area autofocus display. But if you want to use the cluster area plus continuous autofocus effectively, you need to get the higher level Olympus cameras such as the EM1X, EM1 Mark II, EM1 Mark III, and EM5 Mark III. If you use the lower level Olympus cameras, such as the EM10 series or the EPL9, EPL10, you still get the cluster area display, but you cannot use it together with the continuous autofocus effectively. You can only use the cluster area with the single autofocus. I admit that I don't use continuous autofocus most of the time. I shoot mostly with single autofocus. It gets the job done. However, I acknowledge that if you are a sports shooter, continuous autofocus is extremely crucial. And I did use continuous autofocus in rare occasions that I was shooting sports. The continuous autofocus plus the cluster area display enabled, this is truly helpful in situations where you only have very few subjects within a frame. For example, if you're shooting sports like tennis, when you only have one or two players inside a frame, or if you're shooting fighting sports like Muay Thai, kickboxing, or AFC fights, when you have two people in the ring fighting, then the cluster area autofocus, once you enable it, it will automatically find the subject in the frame. You don't even have to move the focusing point. The camera will find that subject for you and track its movement full time. All you have to do is just make sure that the subject is within your composition. And when you're ready, you see the right moment, you click the shutter button. That's all. The continuous autofocus with cluster area display is so easy to use. Even a noob like me will be able to use it to shoot sports and get very high hit rates. So in which situation that the cluster area autofocus is not suitable for continuous autofocus shooting? In the sports where you have too many players that you have to fit within a frame, for example, basketball or football, if you have five players you want to fit in your frame, then the camera will be confused if you use cluster area autofocus. It cannot track the one particular subject that you want. The camera will randomly select one subject. Usually it is the one closest to the camera. It may not be the one that you want to be in focus. In such situations, I usually would turn the cluster area autofocus off. Either I use the continuous autofocus and make sure that the subject that I want to track is on the focusing point that I've assigned, or I can use continuous autofocus plus tracking. To enable the cluster area display for continuous autofocus, first you have to enable the continuous autofocus mode. You can do that by going into the super control panel, press OK to access the super control panel and find the focusing mode. It is here, then you select continuous autofocus, which is the CAF. Next, you need to enable all area autofocus display. Uh, for most OMD cameras, you can just go any of this up, down, left, right button, but for EM10 series or EPO9 series, you need to press left first. Then after that, you can use the dial for OMD cameras, the front dial, until you turn it until you see all area in focus like so. 
Next, you have to go into the menu. Under the menu, go to the cog or the gear. Then find the autofocus settings, which is in A. Go to A2. Here you have the AF area pointer. Select on 2. This is very important. You need the AF area pointer on 2. Once this is enabled, all you have to do is just half press the shutter button. You can see that there's a cluster area that will automatically find the subject which it will track for you. One very important note whenever you use continuous autofocus shooting with burst sequential mode in your Olympus on the camera is not to use burst sequential high. This is very, very critical because the continuous autofocus will only work with burst sequential low. This applies to both electronic shutter and mechanical shutter. This rule was ignored by a lot of reviewers, even large size. Therefore, they get poor hit rates. If you use continuous autofocus with burst sequential high, which ever continuous autofocus modes, the camera's algorithm will not be able to refocus in between each frame. It will only focus on the first image and every subsequent frames will not have very, very effective autofocus tracking. To have every single frame for the camera to work really hard to refocus, you must set the burst sequential shot to low and this will ensure you get very good keep rates. Now before someone asks, hey Robin, can I use this technique to shoot birds in flight? Let me get that question out of the way. Honestly guys, I don't see the fascination of shooting birds in flight. If you love to do it, go for it. I, I will not comment further, but I don't shoot birds in flight. I rarely shoot any birds. And the only time I shoot birds is when I go to Kuala Lumpur Bird Park, whenever there's new Olympus cameras that's released to test the cameras. And the birds in the bird park, they don't fly a lot. Also, if you give a capable photographer, say someone who is shooting birds in flight every single day. If you give him a 10 years old DSLR dinosaur, he'll still be able to get high hit rates. But if you give me the best of the best today, say a Canon 1DX Mark III or a Nikon D6, both cameras arguably having the best continuous autofocus tracking capabilities, I will still give you nothing, all right? So it's not about just how well the camera performs, it also highly depends on the skills of the photographer. I don't have the skills, I just have to be honest. You can't force me to shoot birds in flight because I don't like to shoot that. It's the same as me shooting insect macros. Some people don't like insects, some people hate spiders. I can't force them to shoot spiders. And it's just like me loving cats. Some street photographers scoff at cats. We choose what we want to shoot. So if you want to shoot birds in flight, of course go for it, not my concern, but I just, I'm not the right person to answer the question. So there you go. That's all I have to share about cluster area display for continuous autofocus in your Olympus OMD camera. Do tell me if this is your first time hearing about cluster area display or you have been using this actively shooting with your Olympus OMD camera. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you found my sharing useful, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal account. I'll put the links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution can go a long way and help me to continue making similar videos to publish them right here. If you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. And also remember to go out and take more photographs. Until the next video, please stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.